Once you pick the question you think best reflects what you want to know, it is time to refine it. In this video, I am going to talk about the top four mistakes students make when writing their research question. It is common for questions to start off with one of these issues. A question is too broad if it contains too many concepts to be manageable. For example, how do nursing students describe confidence, competence, and accountability? That question has three concepts to explore, so it is not pragmatic. Interviews would take way too long to provide an in-depth answer to the question. It is best to focus on just one concept. The question may also be too broad if the population is too large. If my question wasn't focused on nursing students, it would make it difficult to conduct the study. If you can't identify possible outcomes of your study, it may also be too broad. Or, if your outcomes seem too ambitious and cannot be achieved, the question may be too broad. Another example is if the question has so many aspects to it that in order to study it, it would need to be broken down into more manageable sections. A question is too narrow if it is so specific that most people would not be interested in it. It may also be too narrow if it can be easily answered by looking up something simple. Questions in qualitative research should not have assumptions or suggest causal relationships among variables. Here is a horrible example of a question with assumptions. How does failing an exam decrease nursing student confidence? This question does not fit with qualitative research, even though it starts with the word how. The word decrease is an assumption. It would need to be reworded, but as it is written, it is also looking at something that is likely best tested quantitatively. If I want to know the influence of failing an exam on nursing student confidence, I can measure confidence before and after the exam. A more qualitative question might look like, how do nursing students describe the experience of failing an exam? This question is more open-ended because I am not assuming I know what failing an exam will impact. Because it is looking at describing an experience, it is also more congruent with a qualitative methodology. I would leave the confidence piece for a sub-question. In the sub-questions, I would have other probes related to other aspects that may be influenced by failing an exam. Good research questions need to be researchable and interesting. Look at your question and make sure it can be answered with research. It needs to be limited enough that the study can be completed in a reasonable time frame. To know if it is interesting, you can look at current literature and talk to people in your field. To know if it is feasible, it is a good idea to talk to other researchers who have done similar studies or worked with the same kind of participants. For example, in my work with nursing students, I've concluded that it is very difficult to coordinate their schedules for a focus group unless a teacher offers class time, which then poses issues for ethics. Unless it is the only way to fill a gap, I plan to avoid questions that require focus groups. If you want to finish your study in a short amount of time so you can graduate, it might be a good idea to avoid the more time-consuming methodologies like grounded theory. If you follow the advice in my research proposal videos, your question and proposal will be excellent. Remember, everything is judged based on its congruence, so make sure to think about it. If you have any questions, make sure you comment below. If you post a research question, we can try and guess what methodology you are using. If you know anyone that this video could help, please share it. Don't forget to subscribe. If you want to be notified when videos are released, click on the little bell beside the subscribe button. Stay tuned for the next video about how to write your sub-questions. Thank you for watching. I hope these videos are making your writing projects easier and of higher quality.